Hey, I'm Strummer, dude, or mad, or whatever, I don't know. You know, I noticed something strange while checking out playthroughs of The Evil Within. Most Let's Players met a gruesome death during the game's first real encounter. It's as if the game's director, Shinji Mikame, wanted to condition us to see the character's head roll away from his body. It seems counterintuitive to the game's survival horror genre, where the horror relies on sustaining tension, and surviving dangerous situations keeps the taut, thin line from snapping. Like its spiritual precursor Resident Evil 4, The Evil Within builds towards major set pieces. The difference between the two concerns linearity. Whereas Resident Evil 4 allowed for improvisation and provided stop gaps to instant failure, The Evil Within takes a more directed, controlled approach. One solution to problems and leaving no room for error. Unfortunately, the correct process only becomes clear after being killed in one hit. When everything clicks, the tightly scripted sequences feel enthralling, but often the designers fail to communicate what exactly they want you to do at any given time. Many of the issues with set pieces can be blamed on the player's mindset conditioned from the combat. The designers intended to gimp the player, making escape more desirable to fighting, but gameplay says otherwise, emphasizing direct engagement with enemies even during the early stealth sections, so it's never very clear when scripted events require you to run away because you never have to during normal gameplay. It's only obvious until you're in pieces on the ground. This in turn makes decisions to handicap players seem all the more maddening, like removing Resident Evil 4's ingenious laser sight in favor of artificially poor accuracy, obstructing the player's view with a letterbox, and excluding even the softest of cover systems. Further, the few means of defense feel meaningless in the action-oriented world. Instead of barricading yourself in a house and attacking from a fortified but temporary position, you have the useless option of hiding in lockers a la Outlast a game strictly about evasion over confrontation. This design contradiction extends to the narrative and art. After being ambushed while investigating a mass murder at a mental hospital, our lead, Sebastian, wakes up in a nightmarish, ever-changing world. With aspirations towards Silent Hill, The Evil Within misunderstands the power behind that game's disturbing imagery, twisting the familiar into the unnatural a common technique in classic gothic horror. It creates a panic in the audience that something should not exist. The Evil Within uses the crux of its story to, in a way, globe trot and chaotically cut between different areas, the intent to leave the player whiplashed and confused like Sebastian. But from jumping from isolated cabins to grindhouse mental hospitals to fractured cities in such a short span of time, the player can never intimately connect to the setting. The world feels artificial instead of familiar, existing as a blur of seeming randomness. As for the character Sebastian, we can infer an internal development through textual backstory and the visual exploration of an evil mind trying to impose its will on the characters. But once again, the two sides feel isolated and never come together to form a singular idea, leaving the character and player feeling empty and emotionless. In short, The Evil Within lacks a clear identity, resulting in a mishmash of contradictory, half-formed ideas. Gameplay feels out of sync with itself, one half conditioning a mindset the second half punishes. Though its individual elements work in other games, The Evil Within then fails to bring them together with any cohesion. Tone deaf, the game fails to scare or leave a lasting mark. As an action title, it has some satisfying moments, but games like The Last of Us have done better in continuing Resident Evil 4's legacy.